Okay, hello. It is the end of day 16 now. So, been interesting. I've had some issues and they were instructive, so I shall try and share my learnings here today. So let's have a look. First of all, I was wrong about TTS say being uninterruptible. That is actually very interruptible. There's actually just some specific circumstances where it's not interruptible. And um, just to explain it though, I'm going to have to probably explain some of the core pipecap concepts to the best of my ability here now. So here we go. So this whole thing that you see here is a pipecat pipeline. You can think of it like a conveyor belt. And these little boxes here are processes, right? So these, this whole pipeline is a bunch of frames which contain data passing through these processes. Now these processes only deal with frames they're particularly interested in. Now what TTS say does is it pushes a TTS speak frame onto the queue, right? Queues up one of those. And the TTS service deals with those and says those out loud, but those are interruptible unless there is an end frame also there. So basically at the end of the end node, that message will not be interruptible because of the presence of an end frame in the queue. And actually there is no way to make it interruptible in the current setup without adding another processor, or there was no way of making it uninterruptible in my pipeline without adding a new processor before the speech to text service, which conditionally filters some statements and makes them uninterruptible by making it so that the speech to text service is basically off. It mutes it, so it can't hear you anymore, so you can't interrupt it. So I had to do that. Unfortunately, they do actually have such a processor. There is this stt mute filter, which is a frame processor, which you can instantiate and insert before your stt service. And then you'll be able to have uninterruptible messages. Thing is, I wanted to be able to customize this on some level, and I haven't figured that out completely. But they do provide actually the ability to make the first speech uninterruptible and also make function calls uninterruptible. And you can actually have multiple strategies because the strategy list, it's a list. So I can also add my custom strategy once I figure that out to the strategy list. So hopefully that's clear. Now, when I was adding this, I noticed that my bot framework was pretty awful. So I've been refactoring that. And let me just show you why it was so awful. So I'll return to my dev branch. Okay, so this, this base bot is now gone and there's the bot framework. Now, looking at the pipelines here, here is how I had to add my mute processor. I had to instantiate a new one and add it in there. Now this reveals that this whole pipeline builder is simultaneously over-engineered and under-engineered for what I want to do, right? So you can change the speech to text and TTS components to some extent, right? But that's pretty much the actual structure of the pipeline is fixed. And also, I mean, look at this. This is like, this is nonsense. So the processes is an empty list, right? Then you create your core processes here, your, your pipeline, and you instantiate a pipeline with an empty list plus your actual list. I mean, this, this does nothing useful, seriously. Like, so this was pointless. I mean, also the transports, I mean, the only difference between these methods is the name of the bot. Like this was just, this is pointless to, this also, I sort of thought it was useful, but no, that's also pointless. And this, again, all of this was just terrible. And all of this also terrible, like just not good. So refactored that. I'm not saying it's perfect now, but now we have a base bot class and it's much simpler. And you can customize your pipeline here and I'll figure out a way of making it so that I can define different the different pipelines I have an opinion on which are effective somewhere here. Now, interestingly, I have to say, none of the LLMs which I asked about this or spoke to about this could see the, like how nonsense this code was. I spoke to O3 Mini, R1, and Claude. None of them were able to provide useful feedback until I was literally pointing out to it, look, what does this do? What is, how is this useful, right? You know, and, and this is completely fixed. So, you know, you have to really like get it yourself. So then another thing that I was having issues with, and this will be over in bots. I think I actually have to check out my proper branch. Okay, so then in the flow bot, there was another issue which I had because I was trying to be clever with the end node, the close call node and redirect to the handle Q&A node from the, the function handler. Now, this turned out not to be a good idea because essentially when you're leaving that node, the end conversation is always there as a post action. So what you really need, what I, what I needed to do was add another node to handle any more questions at the end of all the other nodes. And then conditionally, you're just sending it to the create close call node, which has no function. So it has no way to transition to anything because of the lack of a pullback specifically. And then it ends the conversation there. So some of the things I learned about how this works, right? So when you transition to a new node, what happens is that any task messages and role messages are appended to the context, and those will then be used by the LLM to decide what to do. And also any functions you've declared will be automatically registered to, so they'll be available to the LLM to use. And the thing that actually handles, makes something transition, is either the presence of a transition callback function, which you can then use to specify dynamically which node to go to, or there is a transition to, which just specifies a node to move to. Okay, so I've still got to do some refactoring, and that will be my focus for now. And that's pretty much the end of this update. So, cheerio.